Do you like to drink beer from the bottle or do you like to drink LaCroix? And then within gravity forms, we can just drop another field under there, put some HTML content in, and then enable our conditional logic. So with gravity forms, it's really easy to, to kind of just walk through and answer the questions to get the form, the form to be made the way you want it to. So when you enable conditional logic, you get some extra fields at the bottom. And they say, I want to show this HTML field if all of the following conditions match. So if the answer to this question, what is your preferred beverage, is beer from a bottle, then I want this field to show up. So let's look at what that looks like. All right, this question right here. What is your preferred beverage? Beer from a bottle. Look, think we can take a bottle opener. Um, what would be maybe a real life example of something like this? We had a customer that um, works in the um, transportation industry. They're called Destination Trains. And so they're a logistics company, and they match carriers with people who are shipping. And so they have this huge multi-page form. And when we start a project, we always meet with our customers and talk about their pain points and ways that we can improve their processes. And one of, the, one of their pain points, one of the problems they were having, is on their multi-page form, they have, they have to have these questions filled out. But the questions don't always apply to everybody. So if, for example, you use a factoring company, you have to fill out the name and address. But if you don't use a factoring company, they don't need that information. So they were struggling with their traditional method of using a filled with PDF, of how do we make fields required that are required only under certain, certain circumstances. And so I said, I can go do a conditional logic form for that. And they instantly have the best so funny. And so we built them this form that says, does your company use a factory company? If you say yes, you don't see the second set of fields. They don't even show up. Um, if you say, I'm sorry, I have that language. If you say no, you don't see the second set of fields. If you say yes, the second set of fields appears and they're required fields. But if you have no selected, the fields are not required. So it, it really streamlined their process and ended up, um, they were constantly having to send their forms back and get required information from them, and they went from about 45 minutes processing a new carrier to about 10 to 15 minutes processing a new, a new carrier because their forms were coming in exactly the way that they wanted. Um, so if you guys want to see a, this example, you can go to their website. There's a link down there. Um, okay, so I'm going to try to save time for a live demo uh, at the end. So I'm going to kind of rush through some of this stuff, but we'll sort of slow down at the end. Um, and do, maybe do some of these conditional logic examples. Um, the second thing I want to talk about is how we pass variables from one form to another. And this is something that I actually do all the time. So um, if you see, can I say okay. So this is like the front page of our website, and it has this nice, cute little short form, hey, schedule your visit. And so we do this a lot where we just have like one or two fields. And then if you fill this out and submit, it's going to auto-populate the longer form with your short information. So it's a great strategy to suck a visitor in from the beginning of your website into, into the end and have this more detailed form. And so the way that you do this with gravity forms is you're passing variables. Okay? So let me explain what I mean by that. Um, first, you would build your short form. Okay, and that's pretty much all you do. That's a simple form that you build in gravity forms. And then you build your longer form. And for your longer form, um, I have this backwards. This is my first time giving this talk, so. <laughs> all right, so first you're gonna create your short form. And then instead of when you click the submit, normally you would get your confirmation. Great job, thanks for contacting us. We'll be in touch with you soon. But with gravity forms, you're instead gonna say, I don't want to do a traditional confirmation. I want to do a redirect. And so I'm going to redirect to the website address where my longer form is. And then with that redirect, I'm going to pass some variables. So whatever variables you want to pass, maybe I just want to pass just the, the name, the first name and the last name, um, you can give those variables a name. 
You can give it anything that you want. You can name variables anything, but of course, we do self-documenting code. <laughs> that makes sense. So I would say my variable would be right here. Then I'm saying right here that this field is just giving the variable of name one, and this field is just giving the variable of name two. And then with gravity forms, if you click this little button over here, you, you get to choose from any of your fields that you've already built. So you can just drop in, then this is the code for this first field, and this is the code for that second field. And so what that will do is, when somebody clicks submit, it will redirect the shorter form to the longer form. Um, on the longer form, you have then the option of saying, I can accept data coming into this form. So this form is built and people can either type data or I can accept data coming in through a redirect. And so whatever name you chose, you would just say, this is the parameter that can auto-populate these fields. Here's another example of a way that we did this in kind of a cool and unique way. So this is a website that we built for the Minneapolis Police Activities League. And so, again, we always meet with our customers, you know, what's your, you know, pain points, you know, how do you guys work? And they said, so they do um, activities for, like, at-risk youth. So they run t-ball and baseball and football, and they have one standard form that everybody fills out. But they don't do t-ball in the winter, and they don't do football in the summer. So at certain times of the year, they're accepting, so they were getting registrations all throughout the year from kids that were like, I wanna play t-ball, and it was spring. And so we were trying to get a way that where we could keep the website simple with the same form, but also open and close registration for the, for the different activities. And so on the front page of their website, they have this nice little box um, where you can select the activity that you're interested in, and there is a conditional logic. So remember when we talked about conditional logic? There's just a text box, a conditional logic text box that says, if you select golf, then I'm gonna show the text, the registration is closed. If you select football, I'm gonna show the text that the registration is open. I'm also gonna give you a button, okay? So the button doesn't even show up on here if you pick a, um, an activity where the registration is closed, and then when you click register, you're dumped into the longer version of the form, and you already have the option selected. So it's same as the other example. This form is accepting this parameter that we gave that I gave a name to, and it's already populated. So now people can't even sign up for a sport. That's not going on right now. So you can pass variables just using an HTML string. And so um, here's another real life example. We had uh, an attorney's office and met with them and said, "Okay, we're going to do a profile for each attorney. Uh, do you want to show their you want to show their phone number? Do you want to show their email?" And they were like, "Yes, we want to show our email. We want everybody to be able to email us." And then they were like, "Wait, we don't want them to know what our email address is, but we definitely want them to be able to email us." So okay, we got to think and problem solve. So what we ended up doing for them is we built them a contact form where you can select who you want to email. And so this is just a simple drop down with everybody's name. And then there's conditional logic on the form that says send it to this person if this is connected. But what we wanted to do for their profiles was give this really easy option to be able to email one of the attorneys. So when you click email Ellen, you're dumped into this form where Ellen is already selected. But this isn't a form, they're not typing anything in. So how do we pass the information to this form? And we do that just via the URL. So this is the gravity form side where I have all of the different, this is just a drop down box. So um, I'm assigning a value to each option. Okay, so the value is just Jeff or Becky or Ellen. And then I'm gonna allow this field to be populated dynamically. And again, I just give it a parameter name. So I could give it any name I want to, but I want my parameter to be something that makes sense. So my parameter is send the message to. Who are we sending the message to? And then in my um, actual page where I would just write the HTML link, 
I'm just going to add on a little bit of information. So the, a regular, a standard link would be starting from here, HTTPS, carsoncs.com slash contact us. Okay, that part would bring you to the contact page. And then I'm just adding some information to the URL. So you add that with what's called a query string. So it's just a, a backslash and then a question mark. And then this is my parameter name that I gave up here. Send message to, and then my value. So I could, so on Jeff's bio, it says send message to equals Jeff. On um, Ellen's, it says send message to equals Ellen. And so when you, when you actually click on that link, that URL shows and that information gets passed. that the URL has this additional information in in order to populate this field. All right, now we're gonna get a little bit more complicated. Um, so it ends up just sending the message to Ellen so that she can email Yes. Yeah, yeah, yep. So Ellen will get, just like any other form, not notification, if it was just a simple contact form, she'll get a message in her email with the form data in it, and then she'll just write an email back, um, or call, or send it to her secretary or something. Is she, yeah. sorry, is she coming back to the same form, Ellen? Or um, well, she gets to, so basically, um, she gets to choose now if this um, client or potential client can have her email address. So they didn't want anybody to be able to see their email address. But once they get the form, once they get the notification, okay. it just comes in an email with the form data attached to it. Oh, okay. And yeah, okay. and it's coming from, basically it's coming from your website because okay. your website is acting as the sender of the email because it came through a form. So she, so, so she replies back. She has to type an email. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so she would have, and the form notification, the name, um, the email, the, any information that they yeah, filled just, out. Okay, got it. Yeah, okay. so the, she would have basically this sitting in her email. Oh, your name equals Susan, prospective customer, phone number, email address, and then any message that they write. So then she can choose call, email. Okay, thank yep. you. Okay. So, um, we had another customer <laughs> that wanted to create a very dynamic survey, very, very complex. And so at first, I was thinking, okay, 30 question survey, do you agree, disagree? Yeah, I can build that. Nope, that's not what I want. I want a, survey, a 30 question survey that's broken into seven different domains. Some of the questions are weighted heavier than the other questions. Um, I'm going to calculate out, even out the scores at the end and compare them to an industry standard. Okay? So I'm like, all right, yeah. There's a lot of survey plugins out there um, or like different survey methods, but I'm like, no, I really think that we can build you something that does exactly what you want, um, keep it within your website, and make it look really nice. Uh, but it took a little bit of thinking and it took a little bit of research. Um, and so basically, how we built this is we have the standard set of questions right here. Do you strongly disagree, disagree, neither agree nor disagree? Okay. And each of those has a value associated, right? So if you answer that you strongly disagree, then your value is 0 0.01. If you answer that you strongly agree, your value is 0 0.05. Now, if I want to weight the questions differently, then your value here might be 0 0.02, 0 0.04, 0 0.06, 0 0.08, and 0 0.10. So that question would be worth twice as many points, right? 
Yes. Yep. Yep. You could have made them one, two, three, four, or five, <laughs> but we were gonna do we we're gonna do some complicated math in order to weight these questions and even them out. Okay, so oops. Okay, so now we have all these values. What do we do with them? Right? We need to grab the value for the answer that they selected and then add it for all the questions. So if you select strongly disagree and you're getting this value, and then you select disagree and you're getting another value, we have to add those values together, right? And we have to do something with those values. So where do we do that? Okay, well, what we did for this, what I ended up doing is I added another field to the form. It's a hidden field. You don't see it on the form side, but it's a field that I can now use to put data in. So I can store data in, I can do math with it, I can do lots of different things. So there's a hidden field on this form at the end of every domain, and that is um, the rulemaking domain score. So it's just a hidden field that I can dump data in. So the other cool thing that you can do um, with gravity forms is you can use their filter hooks. So they have great documentation where they show you what their filter hooks are and you can hook into their filter hooks and you can do stuff with a form between when they submit it and when it gets returned. So you have this little intermittent period of time. And so what I did is I wrote a function. Um, the function is, so this is the filter hook from gravity forms that I'm hooking into. And this is my function that I wrote, evaluate the results. And so what this function does is it starts up with a total of zero, right? Because they haven't entered anything yet. And then it takes each question and adds it up. So input one, input two, input three, input four is each of the, when you look at gravity forms, it will tell you what your field ID is. And that then is what, so input one corresponds to field ID one. Input two corresponds to field ID two. So I took, you know, the, um, the four inputs for the, the four questions in the rulemaking domain. And then we're gonna do all this math to deal with how the questions are weighted equally. So in PHP, you can you know just do regular math on your functions. Um, of course, we're gonna round it because we're gonna get you know, uh, decimal places and stuff. But we're gonna take the total, we're gonna divide it by four, multiply it by 100, multiply it by 20 to deal with all the different weights. Um, and then dump this into input eight. So this is this hidden field that we created, and we're gonna do this math and dump the answer into the hidden field. Uh, for this particular project, um, we did everything like in an Excel spreadsheet first so that we could get the math on how this question was gonna be weighted. I mean, that's not necessarily something that you would need gravity forms for. That's more of like a mathematical, you know, if you're gonna have this survey that does complicated things, um, you can set that up outside of gravity forms and then just use gravity forms to write your function. Okay, so now what do we do? <laughs> we've got their information, we've added it all up, we've dumped it into this hidden field. How, what do we do? How do we get the user who filled out the form to see this hidden field? And so, what we did with that um, is when you submit the form, you can uh, have your confirmation include variables from your form. So their results, their rulemaking score is 50. So I'm, that is the, the value that we've added in the function. And then I'm dumping it out into this page. And then their other seven domains are in there. And then we were able to, to use like a, what are these things are called? This bar graph type of plugin to show their score is 50, and then some averages, some industry averages are you know 95 or 96. So this is a really useful tool for them that when somebody's done taking the survey, they see my score is 50, top performers are 90, average performers are 95, you know. Um, and then, of course, at the end, it's like, hey, would you like a consultation? <laughs> because we provide consultation services. So um, this is how you display these results. So again, with Gravity Forms, um, the, we're setting the confirmation 
to instead be a page or a message or a redirect back when we were passing variables from the short form, we set the confirmation to be a redirect. Well now, we want the confirmation to be text. And so, we can write whatever we want here, but we can also hook into the fields that we have available in our form. And so, um, this little you know, pull down here lets you pull in any field from your form. So this rule making domain score eight corresponds to field ID eight, okay? So I'm saying, Whatever value is in that field, show it in the results. And I put a value into that field with a function. Um, and then this is just the code, again, for, it's just a like short code for this little skills bar, I think is what those things are called, plugin, where again, I can on the fly put a, var a variable in there to say this rule making domain score is going to get dumped into that progress bar. Um, Okay, so let's make our own survey. Let me see how we're doing on time. Okay, so we're gonna do a demo of this and we're gonna do an easy one. It won't be, we won't do as much math. conditional logic. Um, if you choose beer from a bottle, this message shows up. And then I've kind of started this basic survey. So let's actually get into gravity forms and see what that looks like. So instead of looking at screenshots, you're really looking at how it works. Okay, here's my form. So I've got just basic First name, last name, email address. And then I have this question, what is your preferred beverage? So with Gravity Forms, basically, you have these options of the different fields that you're using. So you can just have a single line text, um, a drop down, uh, a multi-select, or a radio button. So if you guys don't know, basically the difference between using radio buttons and using checkboxes is with radio buttons, you, you can only pick one. If you've got four of them, you can only pick one. With a checkbox, you can pick more than one. So um, I'm choosing to use radio buttons here, okay? So we just dra drag over this radio button field, and then we can type our question in, and then provide our answer. Okay, after we do that, we can drag an HTML block down and write whatever we want, regular old HTML, but I'm only going to uh, show this field if what is your preferred beverage is beer, okay? So let's make one for LaCroix. What happens if you guys say, I like to drink LaCroix? Um, well, you can just duplicate this one and say, instead of a penguin keychain bottle opener, let's do a can boozy. I only want to show this field if what is your preferred beverage is LaCroix. So let's update this form and let's see what it looks like. Okay, what is your preferred beverage? Beer. This text shows up. LaCroix. This text shows up. Do you guys see how that works? Does anybody have any questions about that? All right, let's get to the survey. A minute of a survey. I'm gonna just find out what your guys' spirit animal is. Are you a morning person? So, again, it's a radio button form, or field type. And then if I click this right here, so for the first one, the beer and the boy, it doesn't matter what the value is. It just, it just, there's not going to be any math or anything going on, um, or we're not passing a variable or anything. 
But now I want to assign a value to these answers. So I click show value, and now I have the opportunity to give this a value. It could be a text value, it could be a number value. So I'm just gonna assign points. I'm gonna give one point if you, yeah, if you're a morning person. Um, two points if, yeah, sometimes. Three points if you rarely a morning person. Four points, don't look at me before 11 a.m. Not interesting. <laughs> Which is the answer I would think. <laughs> um, okay, what is your favorite snack? Similar type of question. Vegetables, trail mix, potato chips, or ice cream. Okay, now we're adding just a regular single line text field, and this is gonna be the score for this survey, okay? So I don't want anybody to see this field, so I'm gonna make it hidden, okay? So now you know we can see it, but it's still there, and I can still do stuff with it. What are we gonna do with it? Okay, this is a fun stuff. Okay, so um, this is just a, a functions file, okay, where you can write your functions. And um, I'm actually going to show you another function that I always use, which is um, another gravity form filter that you can hook into, and it is enabling the field label visibility. And so uh, by default with gravity forms, the fields always have a label at the top, um, but Oftentimes, if you want just like a little short form, you would maybe put your placeholder text to say name and phone number, so you don't need that label up at the top. Um, and by default, that's not that's not an option with gravity forms, but they do have um, a filter hook that you can grab into, and so you can you can create this option where you can then hide that label text. So I always add this to every gravity forms that I do. Um, okay, so now we're going to do some math. So we're gonna write a function, we're gonna hook into the pre-submission, okay? And we're gonna make a function called add the values. So add the values, start out at zero, and then we have input six and input seven. So let's go back to our form. And let's see if we can figure out, oh, okay, this is field ID six, so that's gonna to correspond to input six, and this is field ID seven. So if I want to add another question in here, I can throw another question in here. So let's say, how do you feel about Gutenberg? You guys have feelings about Gutenberg? Uh, let's see. Nope. <laughs> Meh, meh. I'm open. Um, super excited. And we'll get some values. So by default, it's gonna give you text values, but we want number values. Okay, so now I need to add this third question into my sum here. So I gotta figure out what the heck field it is. So this field on ID 11. So I'm gonna say input 11. Don't forget your semicolon, which I did when I the first time I did this, and then it broke my website. Unfortunately, I was in Jennifer's talk about how to fix your website. Okay, so let's find out what my spirit animal is. Are you a morning person? Um, don't even look at me before 11. Oh, I like vegetables and not interested in good words. Okay, so my score is six. So if your score is zero to five, your spirit animal is a penguin. If your score is five to 10, your spirit animal is a giraffe. And if your score is, well, that would be like 10 to 15. <laughs> then your spirit animal is 11. Okay, so this is my score right here. And so how did we do that? So 
So for our settings, remember we're de dealing with a confirmation. I have a default confirmation. Your score is, and then here is the field where we did the math, and I got that by clicking on this little button right here, and now I have access to all, these are all of the, the form fields that I created. So what is your preferred beverage, are you a morning person, any of these you have access to. And so I said, well now I want to access this score where I put some values in, um, and I put that right here. And then I have the answers for the test. Now, another way that you can do this is you can set up conditional text and conditional confirmations, okay? So that was just my default confirmation. Well now actually I wanna turn on this confirmation here that says um, show this text if the score is less than five. So what happens if I say that I am a morning person and my score is a little bit lower? So this changes based on what your answer was. So you can do all kinds of things with this now. You could redirect them to another page if they answer a certain question. Um, you could have it send uh, an email. You could do all, you can do all kinds of things. Okay, so that was my first attempt at doing a live demo during a talk. All right, so the last thing that I want to talk about is um, even more things that you can do. So Gravity Forms has tons of add-ons. Um, you can, what a lot of people want to do once they get a contact form is obviously I want to dump it into my email list with MailChimp, Constant Contact, anything like that. So yep, Gravity Forms has um, these little add-ons. So you just get the add-on for your particular content management system, give an API, dump your email list in. Another one that I've been using a lot lately though is called Gravity Forms PDFs. And so what this does is this takes your form data that you've entered and instead of maybe sending it via email, it's gonna dump it into a PDF. So a couple ways that we've used this is um, the, the transportation website, once the carrier filled out the form, instead of just getting the email that said, here's all your form data, they wanted to be able to file these. I want to have a PDF version, because they were used to having a PDF, where I can put it in a folder, where I can um, organize it, categorize it some way. So Gravity Forms PDFs is an add-on where you can take the form data and turn it into a nice, pretty PDF. Um, how we use it is to create a certificate of completion. So we did a website for um, this group that does these writing classes, and when you finish the writing class, you get a certificate. Well, they did not want to sit and print out their certificates and type everybody's names in. So they have a pr password protected section of their website where once you finish uh, taking their, their, their class and pass, you get the password, and then you have a form where you just fill out your name and the date, and it generates this PDF and automatically emails it to them. So here's what the form looks like. Oh, I finished the class. My name is Rock Hopper, Penguin. Here's my email. This is the class I took, and then this is the date. When you fill out this form, it said, Congratulations on completing your course. And then in their email, they get this beautiful certificate. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. So with this Gravity Forms plus PDFs, there's templates. So you can say, I want to use this template to make this PDF, and this is just a background image, and then these are just the four fields. Yep, yep. So that is um, this one, Gravity PDF. So this is just an add-on. So you would say, hey, when this form is filled out, this is where you pick the template that you want. So you could just say, um, for this template, then you could go in and basically use CSS to add a background image, um, center the text, that kind of stuff. And how does the name go with the file? Can you make, tell the file to be a certain name? Yep, right here. 
So what we did for this, so this example actually is back from um, the destination transport where they wanted to get a PDF in their email and they were like, I want to be able to really quickly sort these PDFs. So we made the file name um, right here. So we made the file name actually a field from the form. So it says carry request and then the company name. So when they have their huge file of all the PDFs that came in, they process like 50 of these a day, then they can see, oh, this was this carrier, this was this carrier, this was this carrier, I'm going to put all these in this folder, I'm going to put all these in this folder. www.gravityfor.ms slash nyc18. If you want to take a look at my slides, which also has this link, um, those are at icebergwebdesign.com slash funwithforms. is 
sending the email. Another question that actually somebody asked me last night is was about security. And um, typically on the forms that I create, I add a recaptcha, and that can really reduce the amount of spam that you're getting. Uh, with a traditional HTML form, you have to write, you know, write in that, add in that code for that um, recaptcha. But Gravity Forms just has a field for it. But <laughs> they have a preload field for it. So you just do your API, put it in, add your recaptcha, two seconds, you're done. So to have the taste of having that information from the form that go to the database gone, you would have to go to either a web monkey or a PDF. Well, not necessarily. With this um, Gravity Forms, I can access within this plugin all of the entries that somebody has filled out. And so you can see all the entries in here, and you can still export them um, to Excel, and then you can do all kinds of stuff with them there. So if you don't want them to get dumped into like some type of a mail management program or something, you can always access all of that information. Um, you just do, would do an export to Excel. Anybody have any other questions? Yes. The entries you're mentioning, they must be in a SQL table somewhere. Yeah. They would be in a SQL table. You have to go figure out which yeah. table. Yeah, you could grab them there too. Probably document something. Yeah. Yeah. Another comment there you can yep. actually use a Zapier um, to send like a uh, field from Gravity Forms to Excel. Yeah. So it's a little bit different than just like a SQL database or many, many others directly. Yeah, I've done that too. There was a customer that had a content management system that I don't think was supported with Gravity Forms, and so we just did a Zapier little, you know, grab the data and then send it. So yeah, so I mean, again, that's kind of an advantage with one of these plugins that's really widely used and heavily supported. You get what you pay mm -hmm. for because somebody has probably written something for what you need to do. Oh, yeah. Could you? I love it. We hired you to make a form. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll do my part. <laughs> yeah. um, so I don't know how we're doing on time. Um, I think you know we're kind of, but um, I would really encourage you guys to like come up and introduce yourself afterwards. And I really, truly do have a slide with me, and I will give it away. Um, but you have to come up and introduce yourself. <laughs>